So this time we're going to be using the other form of mosaic crochet, or the other major form that is in use at the moment, which I call overlay mosaic crochet. Um, hopefully it'll become clear as we go through this tutorial why it's called that, but I'll, I'll explain a bit more about that later. So this time we're still using the same um, main colour, this off-white there, um, but for the contrast we're going to be using the coral. Uh, and the contrast yarn for all of the overlay mosaic parts of this cowl, if you're using the, the suggested colours, is will be this coral. Okay, so I've now just started, I've just made a little foundation row here. So it's exactly the same as we did for the inset bit before. So I did 37 chain, um, but this time I didn't actually change down to my three and a half mil hook. I used the four millimeter hook throughout. You might find your tension is different, which is why it's so important to do a tension swatch before you start, gauge swatch before you start, because otherwise you could end up with a horrible sort of wavy edges to your blanket where some parts are narrower than others, and we don't really want that, do we? So please do the tension swatch. So because I'm doing, if if I was doing the blanket, I've got this is my this is what we did last time. If I was doing the blanket, I would obviously start straight away on the top row here. And carry on with this design but because we're doing a tension swatch we need in checking our gauge we need to actually make sure we've got two separate pieces so so I have now like I said just made exactly the same as we did before 37 chain and then done a double crochet in the second chain from the hook and all the rest of them so I've now got a little run here which has got 36 chains Okay, and I should have also mentioned you probably noticed my scissors on my desk. We're going to be needing these for this part because at the end of every row, we are going to be cutting off our yarn and starting again from from the right or the left if you're left-handed. But assuming you're right-handed, you start again from the beginning of the row anyway. So you need to cut the yarn at the end of every row. Don't worry about your ends because at the end of the curl, we are going to hide them in a lovely, neat envelope or double border. But yeah, you will need some scissors as well. Okay, so we start, as, as I said before, we start every row when we're doing overlay mosaic at the beginning with a new, a new thread. So we are, if you look at your chart, you'll see that we've now got to do row one, which is going to be in our contrast colour. So we start with a slip knot on the hook. And the way I do it, same way as I start my chains, just wrap it around like so pull that through. When I did the chain, I don't know if you remember, it, when I did the chain at the start of the, the inset mosaic, I left that loose so we could work into it, but we actually need a slip knot this time. So I'm just going to pull it tight. Right, so now I have my slip knot on my hook. I'm going to pick up my little foundation row that I've already made, and as I said, if you're making the blanket, this will actually just be the next row on the blanket, so you've got the right side of your work facing you just do a normal double crochet in those first two stitches so if you always start every row of the um, overlay mosaic sections will always start with two double crochets normal ones through both loops and it'll also end with two normal double crochets through both loops um, now, as this is row one, it's slightly different to most of them here that we're actually, because we see if you when you were working your blanket, you actually ended where you've now got a wrong side, you ended on a wrong side row. So you can't really, we need to use um, back loop, uh, the back loops of the stitches to make the pattern and, and they're kind of hiding behind there. So what we're going to do now, we just have to do actually a whole row, which is all going to be normal double crochets. So I just do that. So, so if you want to make sure, just go ahead and do a row of standard double crochets and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so just when you get to the end of the row, do a little double check to make sure you've got the right number of stitches. The most important thing you can do to make your mosaic life easier is to keep 
counting and checking your stitch count. If you do that, it's really, really easy to do. So I've now just got to the end of my row, so I'm going to pick up my scissors, which I told you you're going to need, drop that off, and then just pull it through to fasten it off, secure that end. So row one, nice and easy. So we're now going to go on to row two, which again is a nice easy row um, because we're kind of setting up the pattern. So start again with that slip knot on your hook. Pick up your work. And as I said, start with your two double crochets, one in there, one in there. So that's our edge stitches. So we now need to work a row of double crochets, but instead of doing them through both loops like we did on row one, we're just going to do them through the back loops because we've got a use for this front loop, which I will show you on the next row. So again, just work a row. So there we go. So just into that back loop, just like so. So normal double crochet but you're only working into that one loop so you should hopefully be able to see we've got this little row here with the front loops so just carry on along your row until you get to the last two stitches so so carry on doing a row of double crochets in the back loops when you get to the the last two stitches on the row I will meet you there so I've now got to my row of back loop double crochets just got the last two to do so as I said uh, always remember the last two stitches just like the first two are just going to be a standard double crochet through both loops then pick up your scissors cut that off and pull it through the loop to secure it so there we are that's row two done so now we're going to start using some of these unused front loops here to start making our mosaic pattern so we want to pick up our contrast color as always slip knot on the hook whoops and as always we start with two standard double crochets so now for our pattern if you look at the chart you will see that Oh, I should have actually mentioned, um, if you looked at the chart, when we did row two, you would have seen that there were some, some coral coloured squares, but we just ignored them and we just carried on and did our white ones across. What you have to remember with a mosaic crochet chart is it, the symbols are the important thing. The colours on it are just to give you an idea of what the pattern is going to look like when it's finished. So it's only the symbols you need to worry about. So if you actually now look at the chart for, for row three, you will see after our two edge stitches, straight away we have a capital F. So what you do with that, again, some designers will call it a drop down treble or a mosaic treble. I try to keep it descriptive of what it is. So it's a front loop treble, two rows down. So you're doing a normal treble just into the front loop, not where you normally would, but two rows down. So yarn over, insert your hook into that front loop, pull through two, pull through two. So there we are, we've made our first front loop treble. So now again, if you look at the chart, you'll see, although the next box is white, there's no symbol in it, so that is going to be a back loop double crochet. So where there's no symbols on the chart at all, that is a back loop double crochet. So we now need to make five more of those two, three, four, five, and actually I started at two there because we'd already done one. We actually need a six, a run of six back loop double crochet. So we've done that now and you can just double check. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now we need to make another front loop treble. So well, if you hold it out nice and straight, you should be able to see where it's got to go. It's down here. Sometimes it can be a little confusing if you've done a big long run of the, the back loop double crochet. So just make sure that you've got um, the same number of front loops on our row one as 
you did back loop double crochets up here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So as we can see, we now need to make our next front loop treble there. So yarn over and set under there. What you can do, you see that that front loop pulls up a bit. If you find that you are making your trebles a little too short and they're pulling up, it can sometimes help to just stick your thumb on that loop there to hold that down and then yarn it two, yarn over through two. So we've now done our first repeat. So it started here with this first front loop treble two down and it's ended with the next one. So we now need to start again. So we're going to have another front loop treble two down. One, two, whoops, two. So yeah, we've got a nice short repeat on this one. It's only actually eight stitch repeats, so we can just carry on along. So what we now need to do, oh, you just make sure, as you can see, we've got two front loop trebles there. Make sure you miss two of the double crochets behind. So you want to make sure your next back loop double crochet goes into the third one. So we're missing the right number of stitches one so again six double crochets into the back loops three four five six always worth double checking that you've got one two three four five six so now we get to the last last stitch on our repeat again which is and another treble so again make sure you've missed one, two, three, four, five, six front loops, and then you know you've got to do your next treble in there. So we've now done two pattern repeats. So we've got two more we'll do. We'll do them together. So front loop treble. One, two, three four, five, six, back loop double crochets, again, you know, drop down there to do our front loop treble, and then we start the final repeat, if you're doing the blanket you'll have quite a few more to do, but the next repeat there, so that's our treble, again, make sure you're missing the two behind, and we've now got six back loop double crochets again, Three, four, five, six, and one front loop treble. So as you can see, we've now got to the end of our pattern, pattern stitches, and we've just got the two edge ones left. So as always, that is just a normal double crochet through both loops in those last two stitches. So then pull up that loop, chop that off, whoops, try not to leave these too short, I know we're going to be trimming them at the end but if you, the beauty with overlay mosaic is if you find on the next row that you've made a mistake sort of back here, rather than having to, to frog back everything, all you would need to do, and sometimes you might not notice that that the mistake until you're several rows on and the beauty is you can then just unpick the ends go back as far as you need to on each row to put it right but always so always make sure you just leave a little bit longer than you feel you need to I mean I've got about 10 centimeters there I wouldn't want to leave them any shorter than that just in case that what one of the things you've missed is a treble because that obviously takes a little bit more yarn so so there we are that is our row three done Okay, so we're now going to start row four, sw switching back to our main colour again. Um, and I've already, as you can see, I've already done my slip knot and the two edge stitch double crochets. So again, check your chart and you will see that you've now got to do back loop double crochet on top of that treble. Whenever you get to a, a dropped treble or treble two down, you will always have to work a back loop double crochet in there. You can't do a treble because there's no front loop two rows down to work into because this stitch is in the way. So that will always, every time you see a treble on the previous row, you'll know that you've got to do a double crochet. 
So now if you check the chart, you'll see that the next stitch is a front loop treble. So we're working into that. And with this pattern, it's nice and easy. You will always be working into the last row in the same colour that you're using at the moment. So it's nice and easy to know where to go that way. So we've done that treble. So we now need to make four back loop double crochets. One, two, three, four. And we've got another treble, two rows down. See, it's easier to see where you've got to go with those because they're nestling, the trebles on this row nestle up to the, treble, the trebles on the previous row. So you don't have to worry about these stitches in the middle. It's sort of obvious where they are as long as you go to the edge ones. So we now end our repeat with a back loop double crochet. So we're starting again. And, and anyway, and as you know, it's got to be a back loop double crochet because we've got a treble there. But that's where it starts. So we've got... Double crochet, then we've got stage as well, and up to make sure you're in the right loop. So you've got your front loop treble there. Make sure you do miss this one behind. And then one, two, three, four in the back loop, and the treble there. So you can see, see the pattern is starting to develop now. So again, we just end up second repeat there with our back loop double crochet. Start the new one with another back loop double crochet. Then you front loop treble. And oh, as I said, always make sure you're missing this stitch behind. And then you've got your four back loop only double crochets three four oh, four through all the loops and a treble so I'll just complete this with you again so the last repeat for your tension swatch um so here so we now start with a double crochet front loop treble then four Try not to drop loop. Four, two, three, four back loop double crochets, front loop treble two down, and end the final repeat with a back loop double crochet. And now we've got to our two end stitches, which, as always, are normal DCs. So there we are. Chop that off pull it through Ooh, turn over so there we have row four complete okay so again I started row five with my slip knot and my two standard double crochets in those first two stitches so again following the chart you will see you've got to work back loop double crochet in these first two stitches and then we're going to pop our front loop treble there. So you can see that the pattern is sort of taking these, these lines inwards. So we've now got two back loop double crochets. And whoops, there we go. One front loop treble. So now we have got a run of four back loop double crochets there so the two there end our first repeat and now we start our second repeat with another two then front loop treble two back loop double crochets one front loop treble and then that second repeat with our two back loop double crochets again. So there we are. You can see the pattern now starting to develop. So you just carry on and repeat that to the end of the row. And I'll see you to start row six. Okay, so I finished row five, as we always do, with the two standard double crochets and then fastened off my yarn. And I've now started row six again. Same way we always do. With the two 
double crochets in the first two stitches so again you can see just following the chart you've now got to make three back loop double crochets to start one two three and then two front loop treble so we're filling in this little bit here with our front loop treble one two and then we end the repeat with three more back loop double crochets two three and we start the next repeat with another three back loop double crochets so in this row you are going to have runs of six back loop double crochets with the two front loop trebles two rows down nestling into that little frame there okay so you want to just carry along the row and do that and i will see you for row seven okay so as always finished with the last the two standard whoops curling over don't worry about the the curling up when we do the double border the envelope border that really weights down the edges so you won't get any of those annoying curly corners like you can get on normal crochet um, and also with with this this lovely 100 percent wool yarn it will just need light or sort of damp blocking and that will also sort out a lot of that so don't worry about the curls it's just making it a little bit tricky for me to hold it down to show you so right the start of row seven again i've started with my two edge stitches and this time we're going to begin with three front loop trebles so we've got into that loop as always one two three then we're going to work because we've got the trebles there we know we've got to work back loop double crochet in each of those and to end the repeat we've got three front loop trebles two three okay so that's our first repeat and now we're going to start again so we start with three front loop trebles one two three two back loop double oh, two back loop double crochets and three front loop trebles one, two, three. So that's our first two repeats done. There, so again, just carry on, repeat that to the end, remembering to do your two standard double crochets in the last two stitches. And um, I will see you back at row eight. Okay, so here we are at the end of row seven. Now, if you look closely at the chart, you should see that row eight is actually exactly the same as we did on this run here, row six. So we're going to be doing our three back loop double crochets, two front loop trebles into these stitches here, two rows down, and then another three back loop double crochets for our repeat. So it's going to look exactly the same as that. And actually rows nine, ten and eleven are actually rows five four and three exactly the same as that again so if you just want to carry on through and do all of that and i will actually see you when we get to the end so when you've completed this little swatch gun done to row 11 i'll meet you back there and we can discuss the actual um checking the tension checking the gauge that we've done is correct across both samples Okay, so I actually come back a teensy bit earlier at the beginning of row 10 because I just realised I promised you an explanation of why I call this method of mosaic crochet overlay uh, as opposed to the other method which I call inset. So if you remember on when we did the inset method, we were actually, you have to basically think about what you were doing with your trebles. Uh, and that's how I came up with the name. So with the the other method where we had the chain spaces and the missed stitches what you were doing was you were then working your treble into the space so you're insetting it into a gap that you'd left on a previous row and obviously with overlay what we are doing i've just got ready to show you where the next treble is but actually 
working it over the top so it's overlaying the background double crochets so there we go that is a little explanation about why i call it overlay mosaic and hopefully that will help you to remember so inset you put work your trebles into a, a space left on the previous rows and with overlay you work your trebles over the top of a background of back loop double crochets right so i have now finished this little um mos uh, overlay mosaic crochet part of the cowl so ho hopefully now you're pretty confident to see how just how easy it is to do really um what we now need to do is check our gauge so as i i stressed i think at the beginning of this this little video it's really really important to make sure that you've got the same tension between um, on your inset mosaic part that we did last time and on your overlay here so I happen to know that for me that means that I need a three and a half millimeter hook for the inset and a four for the overlay so that's what I used um, obviously um you, you yours might be different but if you start with that hopefully most of you will be okay right so to work out what our tension is if you look at the pattern the stated tension is 18 stitches across both patterns 18 stitches to 10 centimeters so i've already got here on my inset mosaic part i've marked out it's nice and easy actually when you've got um a pattern repeat that is 16 stitches wide and there's an extra couple in between to just mark out I've just got a couple of pins there if you can see marking out with 18 stitches in between so now I'm just going to do the same for this overlay bit that we've done today so again if you notice we, we had eight stitch repeats so that would be eight that would be 16 so that would be 18 so I'm just going to grab a couple of pins and mark that out just to make things reasonably easy so there is the start if we now stick our pins second pin in there you'll see we've also got 18 stitches there so just we'll probably marry them offer them up together and you can see it's the same or to check actually it's exactly the same tension what we can do is get our ruler and I'm going to keep my fingers crossed <laughs> that my tension's okay and this hopefully I will have 10 centimeters between the pins okay so if we just take there we go ah oh, perfect so if you can see there between the two pins I'll bring it up to the pin heads we've got 10 centimeters between the two so my tension on my overlay mosaic part is correct now what have we got here so we just there we go 10 centimeters again i mean i think this one is about an eighth of a stitch narrower than the overlay but that's absolutely fine you're not going to notice that if you actually found that this was like 10 and a half centimeters or something like that then um you may need to adjust your hook size but say so as long as you've got the same for both you'll know that when you put the the blanket together you're gonna have lovely straight edges Okay, so just to give you an idea when you do the blanket it'll look something like so 